And joining us live tonight is Tina Wynn. She is a national reporter for Politico. Tina, thanks so much for giving us some time. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Listen, Michael just gave us a really good report kind of running down uh, the highlights of what we saw there uh, at, at CPAC. But how much of that do you think, what we see at that conference, how much is applicable to the Republican Party as a whole? If you're talking about a barometer of where the base is, CPAC has always been where that where you can measure that back in 2011 they you could see the tilt from Ray, uh romney era republicanism to rand paul um ron paul libertarianism starting in 2016 you could see a little bit of the party trying to push back against trump by 2017 2018 2019 he was the main draw i have attended maybe about seven six or seven CPACs by now it is a clear indication of where the official Republican Party is throwing their weight, ideologically speaking, politically speaking, and more and more and more, it's been Trump. And let's let's play the game of if it's not Trump in 2024, for whatever reason, which governors now are coming on strong and looking like they would or that they're working now to become uh, the nominee? The obvious choice is DeSantis. He has proven his MAGA credentials by running a perfectly MAGA response to the COVID crisis, opening things up early, uh, repealing mask mandates, et cetera, et cetera. Beyond that, it's a pretty open field. The one problem with other Republicans who might want to jump in, though, is that the Trumpian base is extremely attuned to authenticity and to whoever has been allied with Trump the most. So if anyone has pushed back against Trump in any form, publicly, privately, reportedly, uh, the base will pick up on that. The Trump media will pick up on that. The QAnon people will obviously cry some sort of fast conspiracy. Um, whoever picks up this, whoever could challenge DeSantis has to be even more Trumpy than DeSantis could be. So interesting. And, and speaking of uh, a conspiracy, there were a lot of uh, kind of greatest hits uh, lies about the election that the former president said during uh, the conference and the room lapped it up. Is there even from what you can tell a modicum of regret now that we saw the impact uh, of lies at the insurrection at the Capitol back in January? There seemed to be clinging to those unproven allegations and outright lies just as tightly as they were last fall? I wouldn't say it's them clinging to it so much as it is repeating the message and hoping it gets injected into the mainstream. Look, the only way that the Democrat, sorry, the only way that the Republicans could gain any sort of power in the midterms and, and leading up into the presidential is by downplaying the impact of what happened on January 6th. Um, and Obviously, the faithful at CPAC completely believe it, but if Trump keeps repeating it and the media keeps um, covering those claims and his base keeps saying it over and over and over and over to their neighbors, to their members of the community, then it accomplishes its eventual goal. It has nothing to do with like being brainwashed or whatever, even though there could be an entire segment of the population that totally believes that. It's about mitigating its impact over time and at least leading up to 2022. Oh my goodness, 2022. <laughs> and Dina, one more question before we let you go. One of the uh, one of the things that grabbed a major headline from what we saw at CPAC was that moment where the crowd literally cheered when it was mentioned that President Biden uh, missed his July 4th goal of getting 70% of American adults at least one uh, shot. Even Dr. Fauci called that a horrifying moment and now we're at a, at a at a spot now where obviously we have this delta variant and most of the sickness most of the hospitalizations and most of the deaths are happening amongst the unvaccinated right now in this country and red republican states have the have the poorer vaccination rates in the country how do how does that room reconcile those facts as they cheer the country missing a milestone like this you have to go back to the very beginning of the pandemic where you saw Republicans downplaying the impact of the virus. Then as it got bigger, saying, OK, well, the people who are impacted are clearly people who are old, people who are already sick. Uh, you they shouldn't like we should not have to sacrifice in order to protect them. And as time goes on, you can see the eventual outcome of this. Uh, the 
activity, the things that one would have to do in order to prevent the spread of the coronavirus uh, infringes upon what they believe are their inalienable rights, uh, their right to, you know, walk around maskless, their right to enter a restaurant without wearing a mask or observing social distancing measures. They view this as a tyrannical curtailing of their liberties. And yeah, put aside the health part for a second, any moment that the like quote unquote big government has where they lose on that front is automatically a victory for the Trumpian base, the MAGA movement overall. Tina Wynn from Politico, thanks so much for your time and insight tonight. We appreciate it.